Dream Center Church is a restoring place, a place where we make disciples of Christ, teach and train them to live as children of God, and to thrive into who He created them to be. We believe that this is the best time on earth to be alive, to experience the end-time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Get ready to be renewed, recharged, and restored to go out and take the gospel to your world. To see Jesus get his full reward. That means that he fully gets everything he paid for. That means you. If you're not walking in his fullness, he doesn't get his full reward. And he wants you to walk in the fullness of everything he's done for you. He gives you promises so they'll come to pass. He doesn't give them to you to tease you. He gives them to you to bless you. Hallelujah! You know God wants you blessed. He did. And wouldn't that be good news if God wanted you blessed? Well, all we have is good news. He wants us blessed. He said, "Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Yes, above all things that you prosper yes, and be in health." Do you know God wants you to prosper? Yes. If you're not prospering, Jesus is not getting his full reward. Why did he bring you here? To hear the truth? Because it make you free. Free from what? Free from whatever is holding you back. Free from whatever is holding you down in bondage. Freedom from anything that's not from the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came on a mission to set captives. He didn't come to condemn them. He came that they might be free. That they might be saved. Saved from what? From the kingdom of darkness. You see, when Adam fell and bowed his knees to Satan, him and Eve, Satan became the God of this world. God didn't put him in charge of this world. He put Adam in charge of this world. But when Adam bowed his knees, based on a misunderstanding of the truth or not believing the truth, it got us in trouble. And Jesus came to set us free. Amen? Amen. You're up here all day. <laughs> He wants us free, Jamie. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He also wants you free from, I don't know who this is for. There's someone in here, or someone online, but sometimes the devil just yaks in your ear and just telling you you're not going to do this and you're not going to do it. He's, he's, no, he's no different than he's ever been. Eve, when Satan said that God said, don't eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, she said, yep, God said, don't eat it or touch it. The day will do, will surely die. He gets, and Satan, the next thing he says is, you will not surely die. He, contracted, he, he contradicted exactly what God said. He lied. And anything that's different from what God says is a lie. Amen. You may be living a lie when God wants you to live in the truth. Amen. You're free. He made you free before he created the world. You haven't found out about it or you haven't accepted it yet. But the day you want to get free, you'll be free. When you know who the free air is. Amen. <clears throat> anyway, for that one that the devil is yakking in your ear, we said it a minute ago, this kind of praise has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. When the devil is yakking in your ear, laugh at him and then start, start praising God. And he'll shut up. Amen. It's the faith of babes. Father, we thank you. Thank you for these gifts and offerings. These tithes, Father, you told us to bring our tithe into the storehouse and prove you now here with us. See if you won't open the windows of heaven, pour out blessings we can't receive. I can testify to your truth. When I begin to tithe, God, you change my financial world. Yes. And I give you praise for it. It was there all along. And I thank you for it in Jesus' thank name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. It was there all along. He was there all along. Whatever you're going through, whatever problems you find yourself in, God's got a promise to get you through. And just because he promises it to you doesn't mean it, it comes to pass. You have to operate in faith. You have a part to play in your walk with God. Don't just sit there and think God's going to do everything for you. He's going to come be your butler and clean up and give you money. He wants you more blessed than you want to be blessed yourself. And to get back what the devil stole, he was willing to sacrifice his son, the one who knew no sin, to become sin so that you and I would become the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God. 
Jesus' blood made you the righteousness of God if you accept it by faith. And you got all the faith you need to receive every promise from God. If you open your ears to the word of God and your eyes and your heart, faith comes. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. Don't say, I know that. I got that. You better get in that book. Amen. You better get in that, in that word of God. The, um, this whole walk we have with God is by faith. Every bit of it. In fact, we're commanded four places in the Word of God. Habakkuk, Hebrews, Romans, and Galatians, I think. It's four. That the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. Amen. The righteous. Who is that? You and I, if we believe God. Abraham believed God, and God counted that to him for righteousness. That was in Romans 4th chapter. But that wasn't written for his sake alone. That was written for our sakes too. Righteousness. Right standing with God is granted to us also who believe in, trust in, hear to, and rely on God. Who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was put to death because of our misdeeds, and was raised again to secure our justification, making our account balance, absolving us from all guilt before God. When we believe God, God counts it to us as righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Who became sin so that we'd be free. Ah. It was moved by love. God is love. He doesn't just have love. He is love. And his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is a kingdom of love and kindness. Love. The psalmist said, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Because your loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is better than our own life. Thus will I bless him while I live. Jamie said this earlier, we're going to live forever. You're going to either live forever with God or without God. And living without God is worse than any hell you can go to. Some of you are in the places we are because we're not walking with God. Guess what he says about that? Come on home. Come on. He's not mad at you. He's standing like the the father, the prodigal son that went out. He's waiting for you to come home. Come on home. He's not mad. He already took care of the problems that you had. The sins that you committed that you're feeling bad about, he's he's already already paid them off. Now don't be foolish and carry them yourself and, and live in that guilt and under that power of sin when he's set you free. In fact, he didn't set you free, he made you free. And what do you do to be free? Believe him. Amen. Jesus said, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, then when you know that I am, I do nothing by myself. But the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. He turns to his disciples and said, and if you continue in my word, you would be my disciples indeed. To be disciples of Jesus Christ, we continue in his word. It is a lifelong journey for us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. It's not a 12-week class. It's discipleship. And we will do it for the rest of our life. And when we get to heaven, guess what? We'll be learning stuff there. We'll never get to the end of God. We'll never fully understand it. We'll never go, okay, now I fully understand everything. Even though we'll have an eternity to do so, we cannot fully gather in all about him. Because he's beyond our imagination. But he still says, come up here. Learn about me. Come learn. There's one one a couple of praises I usually pray that are from the scriptures, two are from Revelations 4, two from Revelations 5. The one, the one from Isaiah, and, and I talked about it in prayer on Wednesday night. By the way, prayer after this week, next week goes from 4.30 to 6 instead of 5.30 to 7. 4.30 to 6. Not this week. This week is 5.30. But on the 20th, week after this Wednesday, we'll change but I was talking in prayer on Wednesday night, and I was, re- I was quoting the scripture. And it says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, Amen. commander of the angel armies, the Lord of the Sabbath. I don't know if you can imagine. I don't know if you saw that movie, Born, whatever is it? Uh, oh, man, what's the name of that movie? With Mel Gibson. He's, 
Braveheart, that's it. He's lined up. They got this army lined up, and they look like they're fighting an undefeated foe. And they're charging him up. Well, God sits on his throne and on his horse, and he's got flanked of angels as far as I can see. That's the Lord of the Sabbath. That's the Lord of the host. When he goes, when he just flips his finger, they take off, and they win. Amen. There's no challenge from Satan against God's army. I don't know why he's so stupid to think he can do what he's doing. <laughs> and we'll look at him and say, is this the one? We'll, we'll look at him when all this is cleared and things, are, the veil's lifted and we'll come up to Satan. We'll go, is this the one that deceived the nations? Him? Him? Because we won't be seeing dimly. And if you press in, you'll see. Everything that God says, everything you need, he's done. Amen. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the, the commander of angel armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, I'm looking at him, I'm saying, Dip, Revelations, no, no, no. That's from Isaiah. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Just as though the presence of God is here with us, whether you feel him or not doesn't mean he's not here. Come on, come We're on. so used to living by our sense realm perception that we fail to trust God for what he says more than what we see. Come on, come on. And faith sees what can't be seen. Amen. Faith gives power to that which is seen. Let me read this one verse to you. This is from... Uh, this is from Hebrews Amen. 11. Mm. Now faith brings our hopes into reality wow. and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Faith oh. is all the evidence required to prove what is yet unseen. Wow, think about that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. King James. The proof of things we do not see. Faith is a confirmation titled to the things hoped for. Being the proof of things we do not see. Faith perceives as real fact. This is the Amplified. Faith perceives as real fact what's not yet been revealed to our senses. Amen. Amen. We're convinced that what God says is true, we see what he said, even though it's not yet visible. But faith gives life to that which is unseen. Amen. When God said, light be, there was no light until he said it. And then it became because faith speaks. Why do you think we make these confessions every day? Why we try to get you to come in and say these things? Because unless you get it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you do without it. Wow, wow. You have to, you, not only do you have to believe God, because listen, here's what it says. Uh, if you confess with your mouth, this is Romans 10, 9 and 10. And it's talking about faith. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then are you saved? If you confess with your mouth. It didn't say if you think. If it didn't say you, you, you put it in your thought processes or you meditate. No, no. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that, what, what God, that God raised him from the dead, then are you saved? Amen, amen. Listen to this. For the heart men believeth unto righteousness. Wow. Now what did we just quote about Abraham? Abraham? Abraham believed God and God counted to him for righteousness. Amen. amen. A, I mean, just, let me give you a clue. Abraham believed in stuff we're walking in. and was glad to see it. Though he didn't yet get to walk in it himself. Do you think he'd like to have been filled with the Holy Ghost like we get the opportunity to be? Amen. Yes, sir. Moses would have loved for that. The first person we see do it was Jesus. After the fall, Jesus came and was completely filled with God. And because of that, he made evident the kingdom realm around him. He said, understand this. If I've cast the devil out, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Amen. If God is everywhere, 
That means there's nowhere we can go where we can not, not have access to him. If he's everywhere, you and I are somewhere in everywhere. We're not outside of everywhere. We're somewhere in everywhere. Because everywhere is where we, we're here somewhere. We're in this one spot in everywhere. But if he's everywhere, he's here too. And we say, oh, Lord, please go with us. He can't help but go with you because he's never going to leave you, forsake you. The issue is we're not thinking it. We're not believing it. We're not walking in it. We're not tapping into what's able right here to tap into. Abraham believed God and God counted that to him for righteousness. But that wasn't written for his sake alone. It's written for our sake too. Righteousness, right standing with God, is granted to us also who believe and trust and here to rely on God. Wow. He counts it to us for righteousness. It doesn't mean we have the promises, but we're now righteous. Amen. Not too much different than being the children of Israel. You get out from bondage and you come to the land that's more than enough, I mean, into land that's just enough, right? The, 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 the wilderness. That was not their destiny. Their destiny was into the land over here that was more than enough. The land that flowed with milk and honey. But they didn't enter into it because of their unbelief. Their doubting. And God was upset with them. He said, you're not not going to go in. And he wanted to wipe them out. Moses said, don't don't take them out of Egypt. Then wipe them out in front of everybody. I don't know about you, but it looked like Moses was reasoning with God. Abraham believed God and God counted him right. But that doesn't mean he walked in anything yet. In fact, he really didn't start walking into things that God told him until he started speaking words that God said. Come on, come on. Abraham meant exalted father. Abraham meant father of a multitude. God says, no longer am I going to call you exalted father. From now I'm going to call you Abraham. No longer am I going to call you Abram, exalted father. From now I'm going to call you Abraham, the father of a multitude, comma, listen to this, because the father of a multitude, I have already made you. You didn't become the father of a multitude when it manifests. You came that when God said it. What God says about you is true. It comes to pass when you get involved and believe unto righteousness, but then you confess what God says with your mouth Believing that what you say will come to pass. Amen. Amen. It really shouldn't be hard because God never lies. Oh. <laughs> Think about it. It should not be hard to believe him because it's impossible for God to lie. Wow. Wow. If you would like your situation future to change, you're going to have to change what's in your heart and what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. And you need to put God's word in your mouth come and on. not the world's word in your heart and, and in your mouth. Come on. Abraham believed God and God counted that to him for righteousness, but that wasn't written for his sake alone. Now listen again. For with the heart men believe with under the righteousness, but with the mouth the confessions made to salvation. Wow. God speaks things into existence. Amen. He doesn't build them with his hands. He speaks Ooh. them. Ooh. Yeah, but he formed our body. I'm glad you brought that up. If he spoke us into existence and breathed life into us, but then he formed us with his own hands, what do you think he cares about our body? He must care about it enough to personally form it. And if he personally formed it, he surely will heal it. But what made our body was his words. And if you tear down a brick wall, you can't put, put plaster back in there and have the same thing you had. If you tear down a brick wall, you've got to replace it with bricks. And if your body gets broken, then you need to replace it with what made it words of God. That's why Jesus spake and would say, be healed. And then he told them how this operates, how this faith operates. Before I get there, let me just remind you one time that what Peter said when Jesus said, how many times I got to forgive this guy? Seven times? He goes, no, seven times 70. I did the math one time. If you try to do that in one day, you can't get it done. To go find somebody to forgive them. Then they do something again. Then you have to go back. I mean, 490 times in a day, you can't get it done. Then tomorrow you start over again. Right? So you forgive somebody. And then Peter goes, man, increase our faith. Like, in other words, I ain't got enough faith. Jesus, give me some more. He said, Peter, if you only had that much, 
if you only had mustard seed faith. And, and you know what we do? Because we generally think negative because we're coming from a negative environment of this kingdom, of this world. We think the lowest common denominator. Like when Jesus cast a devil out of that boy and it threw him on the ground, his father had just told everybody, this thing's always trying to kill him. And when Jesus cast a devil out of him, it threw him straight on the ground and everybody said, he's dead. Why would you go to the worst possible outcome? Why do you think he's dead? Come on, preacher. Come on. He's not dead. Jesus grabbed him by the hand and picked him up. But they thought the worst. Lord, increase our faith. Jesus is trying to tell us if, if one day our faith grows to the size of a mustard seed, that makes no sense. I believe with all my heart what Jesus was saying, Peter, you're asking for more faith. You got more faith than you know what to do with now. But even if you took the faith you had and whittled it down to just that big, that's enough faith to tell that mountain to be moved and it would obey you. Come on, come on. People say, man, I shouldn't have enough faith for that. <laughs> no, that's not true. What kind of faith do we have? The it's the faith of God. Amen. Do you think the faith of God works? Yes. Uh, yeah. It works in the mouth of one who believes it. Amen. Don't work in the mouth of one who's un unbelieving or doubting or not trusting God. Come on, do you come know on. we really all we really got to do is just trust God? Listen up, this is key. It's so simple, but all we really have to do is believe God. God. Do you know that if you believe God, nothing's impossible? I don't know what you're going through, but if you, need, if you just trust God, it, your life will change. I mean, if it's finances, mental, addiction, whatever, you, you, you can't figure out what you are. It don't make any difference. What you're going through, you trust God, things will change. And if you believe him, and begin to say what he said. That's why we do these confessions. We've done them for 12 years, as long as we've been around since 2011. Well, that's 13 years we've been a church. We make confessions every Sunday. Why? Because I want the word of God to get in your heart, reside there, and then come out of your mouth in faith. Woo! Jesus spoke to things that were inanimate objects, like a fig tree. <laughs> he looked by a fig tree one day and said, thought there's fruit on it. There was no fruit. He said, fig tree, no man is ever going to eat fruit from you again. <laughs> like that fruit tree said, well, I guess I might as well die. He didn't say die. He just said, no man eat fruit of you ever, ever, ever after forever. If you're not producing the fruit that God's called you to, you might as well not live. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, that's big. God wants you to live. Amen. Therefore, he wants you to produce fruit. I got about three avenues open, but let me take down one more. <sighs> Jesus says, My, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And if you're not Jewish, then you're grafted in. And, and all, all the grape stock now for wine is made from root stock. And, and a, a plant, a particular type, let's say Cabernet or Chardonnay, is grafted onto a root that's resistant to phylloxera. In the 1800s and the 1900s, it went, hit through Europe and killed all the vines. And they found a wild grape in the mountains of Alabama in the United States, and it's, it's resistant to phylloxera. So they started cutting that and making <coughs> graft into that, and now we, they got over phylloxera. Well, he says, I'm the vine, and, you're, and then you can graft branches in. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Any vine that's not producing fruit, God lifts it up. In other words, he's, he's trying to help you get there. If you're producing fruit, he'll trim you. Why? Because when he trims you, you produce more fruit. Now, he's not going to say, because Jesus said, now, you're already pruned by the words I speak unto you. Amen. Amen. This year's vines don't produce fruit. They do produce next year. So they prune it back. So this vine that grew this year will now produce fruit next year. And sometimes it's cut like that. Jesus said, you already pruned with the words I speak unto you. We have this, this opinion, once again, that if you, if you start producing fruit, God's just going to bash you so you produce more fruit. No, that, you, know, you missed the whole point. He's going to prune you 
with the word. Jesus said, I've already preened you by the words I speak. You got all these branches that aren't producing fruit. Let me tell you what that is. You got all these concepts and, and theological thoughts that aren't from the word of God. They're not going to produce any fruit. Come on, come on. God says, get rid of that one. Get rid of this thought. That's not good. Get rid of this thought. He's pruning you by the words he speaks unto you. Oh, that's good word. He wanna take the the inoperative words out of your vocabulary and out of your heart. And be careful. The devil's putting things in your heart and in your eyes and your ears all day long out there in that world. Be careful what you're listening to. Come on, come on. Be careful, be careful what you pat your foot to. Come on, come on. Because some of them people are for the devil. Wow. Like, what was his name? There's an old rock star. He says, I, I, I think of his name. He says, if I can get you to pat your foot, I can get you to throw a rock or throw a brick. If I can get you to pat your foot, I got gotcha. you. Not nothing to do with this. <laughs> but everything you speak is going across a rock and it's recorded molecularly. I think you'll be able to go back and trace every word you ever said. And somehow, you know, we need to get to the place where we say, Lord, I repent for every word, idle and operative word I've ever spoken that's contrary to your truth. Come on, come on. Thoughts become words. Be careful what you're listening to, Jesus said. He's talking about, he says, a sower sows the word. He's talking about the word, the, God, the word of God that's sown. This one went, the birds ate it. This one went in the ground, but it was in rocky soil. It can't grow. It jumped up, but as soon as the heat came, it killed it because the rocks got hot and burned the, burned the roots. This one grew over here with thorns and thistles and never weeded the garden. They never got those old things out, which is the cares of this world, deceiving us, riches, lust of other things. They come in and choke out the word, but this one had was in good soil and produced a harvest some 30, 60, 100 fold. Hallelujah. What was the difference between the seed that was on the wayside and the one that produced a harvest? Not a thing. That same word produced harvest in the right conditions. If your conditions aren't right, the word of God will not work in your heart. You got to get the thorns out, the thistles out. And don't keep planting word of God in there and start planting the devil's words right beside it. That's like the guy coming in planting tares right beside the wheat. You're going to have to get it out sometime. Amen. <laughs> and the, the harvest, if it don't take it all out now, you might not know which one's the wheat and which one's the tares. So let it come up. If it's got fruit, then we'll get it out. And then the stuff that we take out, it'll be burned. Jesus was telling them about the parable of the source. He said, be careful what you're listening to. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear, the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth that you hear has everything to do with the, the, the harvest that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Wow, In other words, wow. God sows the word. You're the caretaker of your farm, which is oh. your heart. You determine, not God. You determine what kind of harvest you have in your life. Amen. Amen. By what you do with the truth you hear. Wow. And Jesus said wow. the same thing in his passion translation. What are you going to do with this truth you heard? What are you going to do with the word of God you hear? You need to make a determination that I'm going to believe it. Amen. In fact, you should pick up your word and say, Lord, before I even read it, I declare I'm going to believe what you say. Amen. And not read it, then see if you can figure out whether or not you can believe it or not. <laughs> That's what we do. Well, I don't know, but I, man, that man, brother Noble, I don't know, how, I don't, I don't know how to understand it. if I can believe that. Well, yes, you can. It's just easy as pie. Just believe God. Amen. Nobody can make you believe, and nobody can stop you from believing. It's totally up to you. Amen. You mean what we believe is up to us? Yeah. Come on, come on. But what if it seems impossible? That's the way God rolls. <laughs> don't, don't look for things to be logical and understandable and everything about it you know with God. Now, he wants you to understand it, but he's going to ask you to do some things that seem impossible to you. Come on, come on. But for him, there ain't nothing Amen. impossible. So Jesus is, comes at this fig tree and says, no man eat for you hereafter forever. Listen to that. This tree no longer could produce fruit and it died. 
How many of us are living dead lives because we're not producing the fruit that God's called us to live? And we keep wondering why God's not doing something when actually he's planting the word of God in your heart to go change the world around you. Wow, wow. Too many times we pray for God to do something he's already told us to do. Now, if all my dishwashers that came to our restaurants came in and said, now, brother, now, would you come help me wash dishes tonight? I said, I'll come help you tonight. I'll help you get behind a little bit. I'll help you. But that happens every day. I'm saying, you know, I might have to go get somebody else because I'm not hiring you to come get me to work with you. <laughs> I heard you to do that. If you don't do it, then I'll get somebody to do it. And God asks you to do something. Like, for example, Jesus is in the back of the boat asleep and the storm comes. It's a, it's a humdinger, the storm. Uh, and these are seasoned fishermen. Right? And think about it. Sometimes take the picture that you have of the Word of God and these things and get rid of the one you have and let God expand it through your mind. Let me, let me give you an example. You've heard me say this before, but remember them Bibles that had pictures in them? You need to tear most of them out. Because when they sowed King David coming up, you saw, you know, you know, what's his name over there? Goliath over there. And David, in, in, in these pictures, he's creeping up on the David. Like, like I'm going to sneak up and get you. No. No, that's not what the Word of God said. The Bible says he ran towards it. Why? Because he wasn't afraid of that giant. He ran. And sometimes we have visions of what happened in these places, in these parables. That's not what happened at all. For example, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat, and these are seasoned fishermen. This ain't the first time in the boat. This ain't the first storm they went to. Let me tell you a little secret. I like to go out in the boat and fish. I usually go inland, but if I'm going to go deep sea fishing, I don't want to go out there with somebody that's never been out in a storm before. Come on. I'm like, and you get in a storm, and the, the cat in the boat's over there sweating. I'm like, what are you sweating for? You're supposed to know how to do this. <laughs> Smooth seas never a good sailor make. <laughs> and I don't want to go fishing with someone who ain't never been in a storm. Amen. And these guys have been in storms. They shouldn't be nervous about this storm, but this must have been a humdinger because they're all sweating and fretting and crying. They come over, Jesus, wake up. Can't you see we're all about to die? Can you imagine telling the Savior of the world, can't you see that we're all about to die? I bet later when they got in bed, they go, oh, that was I, couldn't, I don't know that I could have said something stupider to the Savior of the world than that. Jesus, can't you see we're all about to die? It's in Matthew's account, Mark's account. Matthew's account says he rebukes him, and then he gets up. He didn't go, boys, good thing you woke me up. We were about to die. It's a good thing you came to get me. <laughs> now, the disciples are going, you know, we're, we're, we, we just did a, a good faith move. Storms came our way, and we went, woke up the Lord to get him to help us. Amen. But he rebuked us. Why can he rebuke them if they weren't supposed to calm the storm themselves? Come on, come on. So many times you run to God to do something for somebody when he gave you the power to go do it. Wow, wow. Not one time does the Bible tell us to pray to God to come heal the sick. He said, you heal the sick. Amen, amen. Believers will lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. If your buddy wants to get saved, then we have to get Jesus to go back up on the cross to get to be crucified and resurrected again so this guy can participate in this new resurrected life? No. We tell him of the good news of what God has already done. And you can partake of that by believing God and operating in faith for what he's done, which actually took place before the foundation of the earth. Because he was a lamb slain before the world, the universe was ever created. Don't tell me the word of God is not powerful. Come on, come on. Jesus walked out what God declared before the world was ever created. Fully aware, fully backed by God, and fully convinced that whatever God said is coming to pass. And then he said, I'm going to pray, and God's going to give you another comforter to abide with you forever. No one had ever prayed for all of humanity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They're trying to get them on themselves. Wow. But I'm going to pray. And God is going to pour out upon you the Holy Ghost to abide with you forever. Amen. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive. And I say this usually every week. When we go to heaven, we don't check the Holy Ghost back in. He's living with us forever. 
when God poured out his spirit on all flesh so that his sons and daughters would prophesy, I will be their God and they will be my people and I will live in them and I will write their words, my words on their hearts and in their mouths and their consciences. That's forever. That's, that's, a, that's, the, that's the better covenant. That's the new covenant that we've been given. And don't forget, I love to stick this in here. Don't forget, it's the Lord your God that gives you the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. Amen. He gives you the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. covenant. Come on. Woo. How do you establish it? You declare it. And you implement it as a member of the body of Christ. Amen. It takes money to do that, but don't worry. He gave you the power to get wealth to do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And when preacher said, Lord, preacher. Why you always take up an offering? You told us the gospel is free. He said, it's like, he said, you said, it's like water. It's free. He said, yeah, it is free, but it costs something to pipe it to you. Amen. <laughs> we, we have, he gives us the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. He gives us his word to put in our heart to come out of our mouth to establish his kingdom. <laughs> so they, Jesus spoke to that fig tree. They go into the synagogue, that they're staying in Bethany, about two miles. They come back that Monday night, Tuesday morning, they get up and they go into the synagogue again. Jesus was walking to the synagogue. I don't believe that he would even, he'd even paid attention. I don't think he went to say, I wonder if that tree died. No, he, he knew that when he released what he said, Amen. that tree's gone. And Peter didn't know that. Peter wasn't believing that. Peter heard him saying what he said. Peter could have gone, that's the end of that tree. I ain't looking over there tomorrow. But the next day he comes back. Look at that, Jesus. The tree you cursed. What's up with that? How'd you do that? And Jesus looks at him and goes, have the faith of God. Amen. Let me tell you, it's a word from God to you and me. Have the faith of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He gave us his word. So he wants his word in your heart. He wants faith that's embedded in his word to get into your heart so that you can believe and confess and do what he's called you to do, knowing that you'll be victorious in everything you do because God's word, which is alive and full of power, is living on the inside of you. Hallelujah. But if you don't expect it to do anything, it won't do the aim. Just lay there dormant. Do you know we can't go in and take that land? There's big giants over there. There's walled cities over there. Shut up. Two people believed him. Them two people went in 40 years later. Amen. When we believe God under righteousness, we come out of bondage of Egypt and we come to a land that's more than enough. You're not walking in the promises yet until you get your mouth involved. For with the heart men believe within the righteous, for with the heart men believes God to bring him out of the authority of darkness and translate it into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. But they think the promised land is a sweet by and by. The promised land was not heaven. It was heaven on earth for the Come children on. of Israel. Come, Come over here in this land that flows with milk and honey. A land that you, has houses you didn't build and barns you didn't build or construct and is filled with grain you didn't harvest and grain you didn't plant and wells you didn't dig and, and animals and, and, and he said houses, plural. Woo! Don't forget, when you have these things, don't forget your God. It's the Lord your God that gives you the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. Amen. If you can't see yourself or if you can't see God believing or willing for you to be prosperous, you'll stay broke. Wow. God can't do anything else than what he's done. He don't need to do anything else than what he's already done. Everything you need for God to do to get you out of the street, out of the ditch, he's already done. Amen. It's finished. It's complete. Everything, Ephesians 1, 3, everything that heaven contains it's already been lavished upon you as a love gift from a wonderful heavenly father. Why don't I have it, God? When are you going to start believing? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Faith is a substance of things hoped for. That word hope doesn't mean wishful thinking. That means joyful, intense expectation of good. Faith 
operates with hope. In other words, faith operates with righteous expectation that God will keep his word and do what he's promised. Abraham believed God and he expected God. Abraham expected and believed God and trusted his promise and expected God to fulfill it. And Hebrews even says that Abraham knew this was Isaac, my son, that God gave me. Well, if he asked me to take him up and kill him, it says Abraham, and I like this, it's a southern term, which is an old English term. He reckoned that God was going to have to raise him from the dead because that's his son. God gave him Isaac. And he knew that when God asked him to sacrifice him, he said, all right, but you're going to have to raise him up again because that's my promise. Wow. And God said, no, you ain't got to do that. We ain't got to go through all that. Now I know, Abraham, you trust me. Oh, trust the Lord. Believe the Lord. Come on. Come on. You know what I trust God for? To show up every Sunday I come in here. Because I walk up this thing and I said, I've been working on some stuff, Lord, but what in the world am I supposed to talk about? <laughs> on the way here today, he says, don't, don't. Don't you remember what I said? You ain't got to worry about what you say when you get up in front of anybody. Come on, come on. I'll put the words in your mouth. Woo! Thank God. Thank God. God, I'm not, a pub, I'm not a public speaker. I can't only tell you anything except what he said. I ought not to tell you anything other than what he said. In fact, the only thing I should tell you is what he said. And what he says is good news. Good news. Glory to God. God only has good news. That's a good Man, we could just stop right there and go home. We'd be said enough good stuff coming. If I came up here and said, God won't ever lie to you. What he says he'll do, he'll do. All you have to do is believe him. Amen. But what if he has me do something impossible? Believe him. Come on, come on. Well, what else can you do? Said, believe God. Oh, I don't know if I can believe God. Oh, you're saying you don't know, understand if you can reason why you can believe God. You better get rid of reasoning because... Faith don't make no sense. Come on, come on. And sense, on. sense realm don't make no faith. Faith don't make no sense. And sense don't make no faith. Wow. Wow. So many people think, well, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look and see if I can figure out what God. You might as well just read uh, Tom meets Jane or something other than that because you ain't going to get nothing out of here going in there seeing if you're going to prove what God says is true. You better go in there believing whatever he said. Bless God, I'm going to believe it. Do you, want to, you want your life to change? Start believing God. Amen. You cannot believe God, and I'm saying he'll tell you how to operate in his kingdom. You cannot believe God and trust him without your life changing. Come on. My daddy Come on. told me when I got out of school, when I got out of school, my dad said, Jimmy, I'll give you some advice. Save 10%. For, no, he said, tithe 10% and save 10%. I said, yeah, right. I'm not doing that. <laughs> How stupid was I not to listen to my dad? Come on, come on. I used to make pledges to First Methodist Church, two hundred dollars a week, a month. I couldn't even put them in the offering plate. I said, "Well, maybe I'll get some money next week." I didn't end the week, at the end of the year, I have these tw- checks here. I'm not putting hardly any of them in the offering plate because I'm not even giving them ten percent. Let me just tell you: Do you want your life to change financially? Tithe ten percent of everything that comes into your hand. Amen, amen. Not nine percent, not seven percent. 10. Minimum 10. It's his anyway. Guess, guess what? The 100% is his. But if you keep all of yours, then your money is cursed. I would rather have blessed 90%, 80%, 70% than keep cursed 100%. Because 100% without time is 100% cursed. And most churches won't tell you that. If you're watching on the internet and your preacher won't tell you that, you probably need to come down here. Because you need to know the truth because if you don't put your tithes into where God calls you to, and I'm not trying to get you to put it, just don't do what I, don't do it here just because I think I'm trying to get money from you. I want you to get blessed. But if you don't follow God, you won't be blessed. Come on, come on. And while I'm here meddling, 
If the, if the United States, the churches in our country would, would, would tithe, right. I think we tithe, I, we don't tithe, I think we give like 2 or 3% to church. Yeah. And they got, they got buckets of money sitting there. 2 or 3%. If we would tithe at least 10%, like you said, wow. the church can take care of the widows, orphans, and the poor. The government, the government is not equipped to take care of the widows, orphans, and the poor because all they got is money. And the answer is not money. It's money in the kingdom realm of God. In fact, we have, we have given to us this kingdom that we can take to this world and find someone who's widows, orphans, and poor. Here, let me tell you how to come out of this ditch. Because the government don't tell you how to come out of this ditch. They want you to trust them and be their daddy. And this government is not going to be my daddy. God is my father. This, this government is the instrument for the people to, to, to govern this land. But the leaders are supposed to be talking to God. We don't want God in. We don't want God in the, in, in the schools. We don't want Him in our buildings. It's so stupid. Why would you take the protector out when the enemy would come in? If you take God out, he, see, Satan came to God and says, "He's walking through the throne." God inside says, "Where have you been?" He said, "I've been walking to and from the earth, seeking who I may devour." He said, "You looking at Job?" I don't think he said, here, go try, try Job. God wanted to protect Job. Are you looking at Job? He said, yeah, I've been looking at Job, but I can't get near him. You've got a hedge around him. Oh, come on. You've got a hedge around him? Do you know God wants to put a hedge around you? Woo! Woo! Well, the shadow of the most high. Hallelujah. Satan said, but if you'll tear those walls down, which God ain't, let me tell you something. God will put a hedge around you. He won't tear it down. Only you can tear it down. Come on. He said, I'll be with you forever. I'll never leave you forsake him. How is he going to tear your wall down? He said, Satan said, but if you'll tear his wall down and you let me bash him, he'll curse you to your face because you, he'll think you did it. God says, whatever you do, don't you kill him. Come on. Come on. I forbid you to kill him. Satan couldn't have killed him if he tried. Wow. And he wow. tried. And when when Satan came and just took his family, because see what happened, Job, he was worried. He was doing what God says to do, not worry. He was worried that his sons and daughters, he was making uh, sacrifices to cover their sins. He didn't know what they were doing in their birthday parties. I don't know what they were doing either. But he was worried about it. And then when this thing happened, he goes, gosh, the thing I have greatly feared has come upon me. Let me tell you, the thing that you greatly fear will come upon you. That's why God says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Fear not. There's nothing to fear for I'm with you. Do not look around you in terror or be dismayed for I'm your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. That's what God says to you and me. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. And Job did, and he got what he feared. If you believe God, you'll get what he says. If you believe the devil, you'll get what he says. It's that simple. And no one can make you believe God. But if you make up your mind you're going to believe God, no one, I mean the devil included, cannot stop you. Woo! That's a good word. That's a good word. Because he wants you to be victorious. Victory. What in the world time is it? All right. I got about three, three things I got to tie up here. <laughs> Jesus speaking to the fig tree. Hmm. How'd you do that? Jesus goes, have faith in God. That was written for your sake and mine. When he, if he wanted to tell that to Peter privately, he'd pull him across and no one would know what he said. But anytime Jesus says something that's recorded by the Holy Ghost, that's for you and for me. Amen. When he says, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to follow every command I've given you, that means every command that he's ever given, one disciple is your, is your command in mine. Amen. When he said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse lepers, that was the command he gave him. Guess what? We're supposed to be told as disciples, you're supposed to do that too. Now, I want to tell you, this church and this ministry will tell you what God says. I don't care what people think. I don't care how the other people think about what God says. But I'm going to tell you what God says because 
You need to know that God speaks to you and loves you and, is, and only has, in his mind and his heart is for you to prosper and be in health even if you're so prosperous. And he wants you to tithe. So that, he said, to bring your, I say it every Sunday, even if we read Luke, which is a good one, I will say it every Sunday, God, you said in your word that if we brought our tithes into the to- storehouse to prove you now here, here with, and see if you won't open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings we can't receive. Now, when we put these curtains up here, I didn't want those curtains up there, but I need it, we need it for the light. But I want you to have a visual that, just imagine them curtains and open it up. And these windows, just God's blessing, just pouring into this place. And then we came and gather up what he's done. And I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Yes. So when God blesses you, Satan is forbidden to steal it from you. Hallelujah. That's a good place to shout. I'm, I'm preaching better than y'all. Now, y'all shouting pretty good today, I got to admit. Y'all, y'all shouting good. They said, have faith in God. For whosoever, he's going to tell you what he just did and how he did it so that we can do the same thing he did. I want, it's, it's not a clue. I mean, it's not a secret. It's been hidden from us. But Jesus said, if you believe on me, these miracles, signs, and wonders that I've been doing, you'll do. Amen. That was a wake-up call for me. I said, my goodness, I've been raised in the church. I've had a Bible since I, before I could read one. And here it is in John 14, 12. He said, don't you believe I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? If you don't believe me for what I say, the words I say, they're not coming from me. They come from my Father who lives in me. Who, by the way, when he's in there, does these miracle signs and wonders you just see me do. Believe me that I live as one with him and he lives with one with me. Or at least believe me for the miracle signs and wonders you see me do. And if you believe on me, these miracle signs and wonders I've been doing, you'll do. <laughs> Why did they not tell me that? I didn't learn that at, 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 in Sunday school. Vacation Bible school, I didn't learn it at NYF, I didn't learn it in, in Young Life, because that's a little deep there. You know, you're saying you're going to do the works of Jesus, you know. Well, that's, I'm not the one that said it. He's the one that said it. Amen. But you know what? I got to a point in my life when I said, what I've been, leaving, been believing ain't working. And I'm in a possible situation facing me. And I need for the impossible to come to pass. And Jesus said, if I believe in the works he do, I do. And greater works than he should do because I'm going to be my father. And he's telling this in this same thing, in this, this story about the fig tree, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into this. I don't know if it's cancer, sickness, uh, irrigation, irritation, uh, any kind of addiction, any kind of perversion, any kind of thing that's on us, any kind of b- spirit of poverty, spirit of brokenness, spirit of a- anger, spirit of hurt, spirit of depression, spirit of oppression, schizophrenia, bipolar. They mean nothing to God. They, they, he ain't, they ain't too big for him. He said, if you would say to this mountain, whatever the mountain is, a thing in your life, it seems immovable. And if you say that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. You don't doubt in your heart but you believe what you say would come to pass, when you say it, it will come to pass. Therefore, I I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, not when it shows up, but when you pray. If you believe it shows up, when it shows up, it ain't never going to show up because you're supposed to believe it's going to show up before you say it, before you pray it. If I pray, I believe I receive when I pray, then I shall have it. Amen. I prayed. Yep, it's coming. In fact, it's mine already. I can order something. In fact, I got to go order some things. But if I order something from L.L. Bean, like get some new boots or something for the wet weather, I got a buddy back in Greensboro, Tim. I would call him up and say, hey, just got a new pair of boots. What? Because we were always competition. Who had what? You know, like, yep, I got them. They got that felt lining inside. I can walk through snow and fire. He ain't got... Well, I want to see them. Well, I ain't got them yet, but they're mine. I prayed, and now I, I, I order. I, if I can go online and order someone up in Maine, I don't even know who they are, their name or nothing, and they say, all right, I'm going to ship this to you next Tuesday. If you don't show up on Tuesday, I'm going to call them. Wait, you told me it was coming. Would you not be better off if you believe God got strong? Come on. Someone that tells you they're going to ship it, and I'm already claiming it's mine. I got them. They're mine. They're coming to me. It belongs to me. It's mine. It goes back to the thing that Brother Hagin did. The devil says, what are you laughing at me for? So I'm laughing at you. You said I'm not going to be healed. That's right. 
That's right, you're not going to be healed this time. He said, Mr. Devil, I don't know if you can read or not, but just in case you can't, let me read something to you. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we dead to sin shall live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I'm not trying to get healed. I'm, I, I'm not trying to get healed. I'm not praying to get healed. I'm not even believing to be healed. I am already healed. Jesus got it for me. Do you understand that Jesus, right before he goes to the cross, it's in Luke 14, 15. He says, come on, guys, let's go. Satan's coming after me, but he ain't got nothing on me. He can't touch me. And then he said to the leaders one time, he says, everything in this whole world is getting ready to change. This whole system here is getting ready to change because I'm going to the cross. Do you understand the authority, the power, and the grace, and the mercy he's already given us? Wow. And everything that you need, that you pray for, it's already yours. Amen. Amen. And if you know it's already yours because he said it's yours, then when you pray, you don't have to ask for it. You say, God, I thank you. I thank you that those things you said about me are true. Therefore, I have what you say. I believe it in my heart. I'm confessing it with my mouth, and I will see it come to pass. Amen. Amen. Therefore, what things have every desire when you pray? Believe you receive them when you pray, and you shall have them. Amen. I probably Amen. preached this for the last 20 some years about Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. When I found my granddaddy's Bible, my granddaddy was a Pentecostal Holy preacher. I went right to Mark, went to 11. He got under I said, Yeah. <laughs> this is an inheritance for me because he was believing this long ago. I just found out about it in 1994. Wow. But it was written back in early church forever true in the, in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We ain't got no problems. All we need is faith in God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I preached that one time and I went back to another church. And went, I, was, I was preaching one place and then ended up in another church and I got there and I ran into the preacher. They said, well, did you preach today? I said, yeah. Mark 11? He's making fun of me. I said, yeah. Ah, I'm like, until you're walking in it, you better preach it yourself. Come on. It, it, don't laugh at it and you're not walking it out. If you're not speaking to mountains and they're moving and they're not moving, if you're speaking to mountains and they're not moving and if you're praying your prayers aren't getting answered, you need to get in there and get it yourself. Woo, it's so easy to go, yeah, I already learned that. Really? John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, said this. Preach faith until you get it. And then when you get it, preach faith. Amen. Preach faith until you get it. And then when you get it, preach faith. Amen. Brother Hagen used to teach on faith. One time he came, this denomination preacher came up to him after the message and says, man, all you do is preach on faith. Why are you preaching on faith all the time? He said, well, first of all, you can't get saved with that. Uh, come on, come on. You can't uh, live the life of a believer, because the Bible tells us the, the just shall live by faith. You have to live by faith. You have to walk by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Wow. Wow. And therefore, you, you, you can't do nothing. The guy, guy said, man, I ain't never preached that. In the 25 years I've been preaching, I've never preached it. He said, in fact, in 25 years, I've never preached anything. And he got on board with it and began to learn how to trust God by Woo! living walking faith. I don't worship faith. It's a gift God gave us to put it on the inside of us to use like a tool, like a, like, a, like a guy uses a tool to change a tire. We use the faith of God to, com to, to combine with the words that would come out of our mouth for an expectation that God's given us from his word. Thank That's you, how we live in Amen. victory. Amen. Amen. Because God's a faith God. Yes, he is. Jesus never doubted once that what God told him to do God said, go do that. Man, I didn't know you were going to do that. Yes, sir. I'll go do it. Absolutely. Hallelujah. We should be so excited and happy to walk with God because what he tells us in his word is true. He invites us into his kingdom, his way of living by living in his kingdom and walking by wow, faith. Wow, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Smith Wigglesworth said, and I'll give you a scripture that backs it up. 
it seems as though God will step over a million people to find one person that will believe him. Wow. Hosea says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth in order that he may show himself strong or mature on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect and mature towards him. The eyes of the Lord, Lord run to and fro throughout the earth looking for somebody who will believe him. Wow. We believe it. Amen. Amen. Say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I trust His Word. I trust His Word. And I speak His Word in faith. I speak His Word in faith. And I'll live in His kingdom. And I'll live in His in kingdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, we're going to do one thing that He told us to do before we go. Uh, I'm going to go back to that one scripture in, uh, in Luke 13. Where Jesus said, now if I cast the devil, they, they told him, he said, well, you only cast out the devils because you're working for the devil. He said, nah, that can't be true. If I cast out the devil by the devil, then I'm a house divided against myself. But if I, the same, on the other hand, I like to put this in there. If he's casting out the devil and God didn't, that's not what God wants him to do. He's working against God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were pressing the devil because God was with him. What Jesus did was the will of God. Do you want to know if it's God's will for you to be healed? Look at Jesus. Come on, come on. Don't look at religion. Look at Jesus. Come on. If you've seen me, he said, you've seen God. Do you want to know what God's like? Study Jesus. He's perfect theology. And Jesus said, no. If I cast out the devil by the devil, I can be working against myself. No, understand this, though. I, if I cast the devil by that man, God's kingdom realm has come near to you. Amen. And you reject it. Satan's belongings stand undisturbed as he stands guard over his fortress kingdom. It's loaded with an arsenal of many weapons. But when one stronger than him comes along and binds him up Amen. and takes his spoils. Jesus said, Satan had this man in bondage all his life and he was not being disturbed. You're walking into people every day that you see they're in bondage to Satan and you walk right by them. They're in prison and you're free in the kingdom. And if you don't reach out and help them come out of where you came out of, Jesus will hold you accountable for it. Wow, wow. He said the Satan's belongings are undisturbed as he stands guard over his fortress kingdom, loaded with an hour so many weapons. But when one stronger than him, him comes along and sets the captives free and takes the spoils, God's spoils are setting these captives free. Hallelujah. He says, this is a war. Understand this. This is a spiritual war. And if you're not with me, you're against me. Wow. If you don't gather the spoils with me, you'll be scattered. I never looked at that till I think sometime last year. And he's talking about the spoils. And the spoils of this spiritual battle was this man's soul being set free from the bondage of Satan's demonic forces and being healed. If you don't gather with me, I'm going to scatter you. If you don't gather the spoils of his kingdom, which is set and kept us free, we'll be forever scattered. And we don't have an option other than to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse lepers. Is that all you do? No. We love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love our fellow men as ourselves, and then we go take care of the widows, orphans, and the poor. We're going to set captives free. We're going to heal. Jesus said these signs would follow believers, but private believers like you and I. They would cast out devils. They will speak with new tongue. They take up serpents. It won't hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. And believers will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. That's our call. It's not popular. And it wasn't popular in his day either. Join the club. Hallelujah. Tell you two or three things that Jesus told us to do, then we're gonna just we're gonna cast the devil and cancer out of people's bodies. First Peter five six five, five eight says, Be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion, looking for his prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him. That's an active verb. You have to take a stand against Satan and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. Now you understand Luke 
10, 19. Now you understand that I have given, imparted to you my authority to trample over Satan's kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 91 that got Jamie excited this morning. You will tread upon a lion and the, you will tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion driving him when you trample under feet. Amen. That's who we are. So we're going to curse cancer. If you have cancer in your body, someone in your family or somebody you know has cancer, when you stand your feet? If you're listening online, either today, March 10th, my birthday, or any time in the next 10, 20 years, I just wanted to shout that out. I'm going to go listen to it so I can give myself a happy birthday. Uh, any time you listen to this, the words that we speak have power in them. And you speak. The, you're the name of the person you're standing for. Amen? Amen? So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority given to us as members of his body, he said, because our name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that's the true source of our authority. When we come into his kingdom, we get authority. If you don't operate in it, you won't do with it. But we know. So we curse cancer in the physical bodies of the people's names that we call out right now. Call your name out. Maureen, Kathy, Natalie, Caroline, James, Mary, Wesley, Jill, Elaine, Terry, Anita, Marty, Taylor, Allie, Carolyn, Adora, R.M., Betsy, Miss Davis, Nina, Susan, Gina, Phil, Olivia, Lee, Tony, Marcia, Thomas, Bob. And plus the names that you called out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, cancer in these bodies, just like Jesus spoke to the fig tree, spoke to the wind and the waves, and spoke to a fever. We speak to you, cancer, and we command you to die in the name of Jesus. Cease and desist your maneuvers now and come out of their bodies in Jesus' name. If this cancer is not physiological, but it's a demonic force, well, we just said it. Jesus told us to cast out devils. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, any of this cancer that's demonic, we command you, loose them and let them go. In any cancer cell, furthermore, any cancer cell within the Santa Monica Fourth, we don't even know it's there. Unknown, undetected. But it can hear our voice. Any cancer cell within the sound of our voice, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to die. And if the root of you is demonic, we command you loose them and let them go. In Jesus' name. Any sickness, any disease, any kind of torment, in addition to cancer, on anybody in this room, if you want, if you want to be healed, stand up your feet. From the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet, we declare the peace of God because the anointing of God is with us. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon us because He's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery, sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. If you're bruised, held captive, blind, halt, withered, uh, cerebral problems, uh, blood issues, sugar issues, liver issues, any kind of physical issue, any kind of bone issue, skin issue, muscle issue, anything demonic that's holding your head in, 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 in oppression, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, anything, anything contrary to the peace of God that comes with God's creative power over our physical bodies and our minds and our souls, we command you loose them and let them go now. We speak the peace of God, the healing of God over you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. And say out loud, Hallelujah. say this out loud. Hold on. Say this out loud. I receive that. I receive that. And I'm healed. And I'm delivered. And I'm set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I, I reckon... I reckon it's a good thing that you uh, came today. What's that? Oh, do you want you want this? Okay. Are you doing it? Yes. Okay. All right. Y'all presenting something? We are. <laughs> oh so man! Look birthday. at that. Is that a cherry tree? So, so Robin, is that a cherry will. tree? <laughs> Fruit cocktail tree? 
Uh huh. Pastor, you talked about the grafting of the vine. Hold the mic up there. There are nectarines, peaches, and plums, hence to make a fruit cocktail. Oh, wow. Well. Well, thank you. God bless you. I need somebody to come dig a hole at my house. <laughs> God bless you. And so, this fruit, this tree is truly representative of, of what you see in this congregation because of your heart because of your love for people, but most upon your love for God, we all of a part are part of the, of the fruit, of the fruit that you have sown, the seeds that you have sown. And today we say happy birthday. We say thank you. We say we love you. And may God continue to bless you. And everything that you pour out, we pray God pours it back into you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Robin. These guys, I'm hugging all of them. So on behalf of the Dream Center Church, the Dream Center staff, again, Pastor, we say thank you. And don't forget to get y'all cake in the back. And make sure y'all give Pastor a big hug for his birthday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Check and see if he might, before we leave, let's just take a minute and invite people to join the kingdom. If there's somebody here who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just wherever you are, will you just, every head bowed, every eye to close, just lift your hand right now. If, if you really want to get closer to Jesus, just lift your hand. Just wherever you are, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that, that you are able to join a kingdom and to serve a God who loves you, who cares about you. Here's a good thing about joining the kingdom of God is that God will take you just as you are but you won't stay as you are. Amen, somebody? Does anybody want change? The word has been spoken. The word has been preached. And change is made available for you on today. As a matter of fact, I want to challenge you. Here's my challenge to you. You might not want to do it this Sunday. You might want to wait the next Sunday. I want to challenge you just to even maybe take a step forward. Amen, somebody? I just want to challenge you to st take a step forward. I'm not even asking you to make it all the way to the altar, but can you just take one step forward today? And I believe that next Sunday you'll take another step forward and another step forward. And before you know it, this altar will be filled every Sunday with people wanting to give their life to Christ. I want to pray for you. Father God, we love you and we thank you for those who took that step forward, for those who raised their hand. God, we thank you, God, that your love is surrounding them. We thank you that you have the power to cleanse them in the name of Jesus and so God we welcome them into the kingdom now God we thank you we thank you for the fruit that is in this house and so God pick us up clean us off and use us to bring you glory we love you and we thank you in Jesus name we pray and every heart said amen amen, amen. Amen. If you believe that by faith, put those blessings together. Amen. And we will, Pastor, you done? You, and we will see you next, unless Pastor want to come back. We will see you next Sunday. Amen. Don't forget to get the cake. Hug Pastor, tell him happy birthday, and we welcome you into the kingdom of God. Thank you for being here with us on The Voice of Healing. When you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, join us for our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service. Our website, restoringplace.org, has all the details on how to find us. While you're on our site, check out ways you can volunteer at the Dream Center. Need someone to answer questions about us or pray with you 24-7? Call our prayer line at 704-246-4595.